Sabbath Church. Oh, we can do much, much better than that. Happy Sabbath Church. Has God been good to you this week? Has God been faithful? Oh, what a mighty God we serve. I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to the Beacon Light Tabernacle Seven Day Adventist Church. I hope you are as excited as I am to be in the presence of the Lord on another Sabbath day because we know if not for the mercies and the graciousness of our Lord and our Savior we would not be standing here today but we standing here today is only a testament of God's faithfulness and mercies uh, that he has towards us and if you agree with me just say amen somebody amen and amen I just want to say welcome to our members and Welcome to all our visitors and to all those who are watching virtually at this time. We just want to welcome you to our worship experience. And we are confident that wherever two or three are gathered, that God is here in our midst. So I pray that God will bless us as we worship him today in spirit and in truth. Please be seated in the presence of of the Most High God. Be seated in the presence of God. And at this time, we'll have our announcements by our clerk's sister, Nadia Morgan, will bring us our announcements for this afternoon. Good morning. No, I do that every Sabbath. Good afternoon. Happy Sabbath. Uh, we're going to go through our announcements uh, before we go into our worship of our Lord. And our first announcement is that there will be a personal ministries meeting after lunch today in the fellowship hall. There's a personal ministries meeting after lunch today in the fellowship hall. Tonight, the 
Education Department's Career Seminar will be held from 5.30 to 7.30. Local business leaders will be available to provide the types of insider knowledge and guidance that can profoundly influence one's personal, academic, and professional choices for years to come. If you're at least a high school junior just beginning your professional journey or thinking about a career change, this is the forum for you. Invite your neighbors and friends to take advantage of this unique opportunity. Please see Sister Al Alicia Shand and Sister Christine Sharp for more information. The Hudson Valley Prayer Partners Prayer Summit is scheduled for April 19th through the 21st. Pre-registration package deals are being offered now. For detailed information, please see the flyer or in your bulletin, or you can call 845-559-8386. Maranatha Volunteers International is coming to Beacon Light Tabernacle on April 20th. Kenneth Weiss and Karen Godfrey, the Chief Operating Officer and Vice President of Advancement at Maranatha.org, will share stories from the mission front lines as they worship with us. Maranatha donors living within a mile of Beacon Light Tabernacle have also received invitations to meet with them at Beacon. To guarantee your seat, be sure to arrive to divine worship on time. I would encourage you to be here early. <laughs> okay. Anchored in Christ is our virtual spring revival series, and it will be held on April 28th and go on through May 4th from 7 to 8 p.m. Pastor Uba and the elders will present the evening's topics. You can spread the blessings by sharing our YouTube channel with your neighbors and friends. Please note the date of the 50th anniversary committee's Sip and Paint event has been changed to June 8th. That's June 8th from 7.35 to 9 p.m. Feel free to let your inner Michelangelo loose while enjoying scrumptious food, good music, the crisp snap and tickle of carbonated unfermented juice and great company. <laughs> Best of all, you'll leave with an original artwork, all in support of our golden anniversary celebration, but you must register by May 18th to give the committee time to purchase enough art supplies, food, and Martinelli's for all participants. Kindly see the flyer in the bulletin for more details. The Youth Ministries Department is planning an AYS social for April 27th after sunset. By now, many of you have received an invitation to film a videotape dealing, uh, detailing what makes Beacon Light Tabernacle such a special place for worship. These video tributes will be shown during our golden anniversary celebration. You will have until the end of August to upload your personalized videotape tribute. Kindly see Sister McKinney or for more, sorry, for more information. The ushers department is looking for a few good people, men, women, and youth, to volunteer to serve as ushers. Please see the bulletin for more information or you can contact uh, Sister Maxine Allen at 845-702-4757. If you wish to join them. In closing, the bulletin contains so many more announcements that can be covered that contain so many more announcements. Some of them are time sensitive and we strongly encourage you to read your bulletins weekly and pay attention to the pre and post service announcements slides that are shown on the screens before and after divine worship. If you aren't currently receiving the bulletin, please give me or any of our clerks 
uh, your email address and you will be included in the next distribution. You do not have to be a member of Beacon to receive the bulletin. And finally, when you visit our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you will be alert when alerted whenever new content is uploaded. Don't forget to share a link with others so they too will be blessed. And now, let us turn our hearts to worship our Savior. Church, please stand for our call to worship. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. This is our call to worship. come to you one more time on this day to seek your face father we praise you and we magnify you and we pray oh God that even on today that you will come and manifest your presence amongst your people move in a mighty way and father we pray that the name of Jesus and Jesus alone will be magnified in this place, in Jesus' name, amen. song is hymn number 71, Come Thou Almighty King. Sorry, number 
number 71. to love somebody. What do you do when you love someone? Yes? You, um, you give them, you give them warm hugs. Warm hugs, what else? You hug them and you say that you love them. Tell them that you love them. I love that one. Um, tell them you love them by your actions. By your actions. You know how they're building on each other, right? Amazing. Relationship. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Awesome. Everything you said is perfect. And I love all your responses. So I'm going to tell you about someone I learned about a long time ago. And he and his friends were taken from their home, right? Very, very long time ago. And they were taken to a new land, a new kingdom. But you know what? When they got there, they didn't forget all the things they had learned. Like you in children's story. And in synagogue, 
They kept all their faith. They did everything they were supposed to do. And one of the things they did was pray. They prayed constantly. This particular guy, his name was Daniel. And he would pray three times a day. How many times? He had friends, and they also did the same thing. They would pray constantly. And because they kept their relationship, eye contact, right, and they showed their love with their actions by what they did, God continued to bless them. And God continued to move them up in position, right? And they kept going and going, and everyone was, you know, looking at them like, what makes these guys so strange, right? And all they could do is give God the glory, but there were haters in the land. You know what haters are? You do, right? Mm-hmm. So the haters decided, we're going to go to the king. And we're going to tell the king that he needs to sign a law that says no one should pray to anyone else or worship anyone but the king. And the king didn't know that they were after this guy, Daniel, so he signed the law. And Daniel found out about the law. What do you think Daniel did? He prayed. He didn't go and hide. He went right to his room, looked towards the window, as he normally does, that's what the Bible says, and he prayed. How many times? That's right. And the people, they ran to the king and reported, king, didn't you say that no one is allowed to do that? And the king said, yeah, I signed that. And they said, well, guess what? That guy that you you hold so high in the scene, he's doing that. The king was sad. He was so sad because he genuinely cared for Daniel. He had a lot of respect for him, and he loved him. So he had to do what he had to do. So Daniel had to be thrown where? In the lion's den. Can you imagine? Have you been to the zoo before? You've never been to a zoo? You got to plan a zoo trip. Four times, yes, that's right. So the, the, the lions, they were hungry and ready. And when Daniel was thrown into the den, they were looking around, but God stepped in, right? And God shut the lion's mouth, and they were not able to do anything to, da- to lion, to, the, to, to Daniel. But the next day, the king ran and ran and ran, and he stepped, and he looked. He was like, Daniel, did your Lord save you? And Daniel said, yes. My Lord stepped in, and he delivered me. Isn't that awesome? Yes. So here's what's going to happen, right? One day, you're going to be a teenager, right? You're going to be 16, 17, 18, and you're going to go to college. And the love that you have for God, the love that you're developing now, is what's going to determine whether you find a church when you go away to college. It's not going to be obligation. It's not going to be because mommy and daddy said so. It's going to be because you love God. Just like Daniel went away, he wasn't with his family, but he still loved and served God. And then you're going to be adults, and no one's going to be able to tell you what to do, but because you love God, you are going to continue to serve him faithfully. Yes? Not because pastor said so, or elder said so, or auntie said so, but because you love God. Amen? Amen. How many of us promise to do that? Me too. I promise to do that too. Okay, so we need someone to help us. Who's going to pray for us? Thank you. We'll take two people. Well, you too. Come on. Let's stand up. God, I thank you for giving us a home. I want you to always let us follow your rules and your rules only and help us to always worship you and let us never forsake you. Amen. Dear Jesus, please help us to have a relationship with you even when we go into adulthood. Please help us to always follow you and obey you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Jesus, thank you for letting us have a good children's story and tune in. Amen. 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 Amen.
Sabbath, church. Today the scripture reading will be Genesis 35, 16 to 18. Okay, can you please stand? Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephraim, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Now it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, before she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benja Benjamin. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. portions of the church service because when I'm home and I'm alone I, I, I pray with myself and my family I worship with myself and my family I thank God with myself and my family but there's something about coming into God's house with all of you beautiful people joining hands and talking to God and thanking him and petitioning his throne on behalf of others it just it does something different I guess that's why, you know, in the Bible it says, forsake not the assembling, because there's something in corporate prayer that just moves my soul. I don't know about yours. This was a very eventful week, as I'm sure all of you have seen on CNN and maybe even in your own personal lives, but I thank God that we're here to tell the story, to give him glory, and to give him praise. So if you feel so inclined, please come down and join here at the altar, because, man, we got a lot of things tell daddy about today, don't we? Come on down and let's just petition the throne of God because he's amazing. I'll give everybody time to make it down before we pray. You are good, your mercy is forever, Sabbath day, and we want to thank you, dear Lord. We want to thank you for keeping us, not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally, dear Lord. We want to thank you. This week came with challenges. We had no idea last Sabbath when we sat here and spoke to you. We did not know what the week held, but you did, and we want to thank you for filling our cup with all that we needed so that we could endure all that we faced. Lord, we thank you so much that even at this time, we can come and we can talk to you. We can tell you all about it. And we are assured that you do care as we speak to you. Lord, we want to lift up those this week who lost loved ones. Lord, you know that um, death does sting. And so we're asking right now, dear Lord, that you go by. We pray for um, Elder Hall and his family, dear Lord. We lift up the Webb family from Poughkeepsie SDA Church and anyone else who's here, dear Lord, that I may not know, I ask that you go by and comfort ye your people. Lord, touch them. Help them to hold on to you like never before because in times like these when the stinging is hurting and everybody has a word, Lord, you have a touch. And so we thank you for that, dear Lord. Go by even now. Lord, there were those who started out this week and, Father, they didn't know how bills were going to be paid, but you stopped by, dear Lord, and you, 
you, you did some stuff that we don't even understand, but it was done. And even for those who it wasn't done for their Lord, we continue to pray and beg that your math be applied, dear Father, that your one plus one become 100, that your one plus two become 200 and bills will be met, obligations will be taken care of. Lord, we also come before you. We know, dear Lord, that there are some young people in here who had some exams, some tests, some anxieties about what they would face at school. And we want to thank you for keeping them. Lord, on the news we see and we hear all kinds of things, but our children came home. And we don't want to take that for granted, dear Lord. We thank you. And we pray that you will continue to empower them embrace them dear lord and as the story said today dear lord may they fall in love i mean deeply in love with you dear lord so that they will always hold your hand lord we pray dear lord for those who may have been affected by the earthquake on yesterday lord while we give thanks that we were not we know that there were some families that were displaced in jersey and we ask that you be with them we thank you dear lord for the reminder <laughs> the very to some, they may have missed it, but we got it, dear Lord, that we need to always be ready. And so, dear Lord, tune our hearts, tune our minds, tune our words, tune our actions. But most important, dear Lord, help us to be spreading your love to others so they too will be ready. We thank you so much. We ask that you be with Pastor, dear Father. Um, get some fresh coals from your altar and touch his mouth, dear Lord. And as you do that, touch our hearts as well so we'll be receptive and prepared to accept and apply the word that he has for us today. Continue to be with his family. We thank you so much for his ministry here at Beacon Light Tabernacle, dear Father, for his wife, for his children. Just bless them. And we thank you that he was obedient to your calling to join the ministry. Father, be with us. We thank you and we praise you because you are love and we love you. In your name, amen. worship. Keep up with the worship. Give God the glory. Give God the honor. Give God the praise. Amen. Amen. You know I need some backup so I know my singer from last time. Amen. Y'all don't mind, right? Amen. Amen. So we're just going to worship for a little bit. Just keep up with the worship. How many love the Lord? Amen. How many love him more than anything? Yes. More than anything. Even on my job, even I don't have no job, even I don't have no home, I love you, Lord, more than anything. When I'm sick, I love you, Lord God. This little praise song is, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Hey, oh, I love you, Jesus, more than I worship and 
transparency, I was very hesitant to do this this morning. And I was like, God, please get me out of doing offertory. Figure out a way to make it happen. He said no. So I am here. (laughs) And I'm glad because um, between the children's story and hearing the children talking about the relationship with God and how they're fully vested in this thing, um, I said, okay, God, I see why you had me here. I get it. You don't have to holler at me. And then... Just now, Sister Hansen, I said, okay, God, please, I heard you the first time, please. But I am so honored to be here today. But today is, at this very moment, it is time for offering. And with our offering, it is an act of worship as well. Sometimes we don't look at it that way. We may view it as I have to give my money or I have to do these things but it is an act of worship. It is saying, God, I truly rely on you to provide fully and 100% for me. And what's beautiful about it is he asked us to return a tithe and to give a offering. Give is what we do of our free will, right? So as our deacons come forward today to collect our tithes and offering, Remember, giving is not required of us, but it's what we should do to continue to receive the blessings that God has given to us. Bless the name of Jesus, oh my soul. Bless the name of the Lord, oh.
now herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this opportunity to be in your presence, to worship with one another, to have you to guide us and love us. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to give, that we're able to function in our daily lives, and that we're able to give you praise. I ask that the funds that have been collected here continue the work in your vineyard, local and globally. I pray, Lord, that we remember who you are and how mighty you are and how you move in our lives from day to day. I ask for your continued blessings and mercies upon us all, and I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of great trials. voice in the desert crying prepare the way of the Lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet's call lift your voice it's a year of jubilee out of Zion's still salvation the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, for fields are as wide in your world and we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's a year of jubilee out of Drop it. 
praise in the house. We're going to still praise him. Amen. Still praise. White 
should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart
Hallelujah. If he can watch a little bitty sparrow, he can watch over all of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And give the Lord another hearty amen. For he watches over me. Come on, say amen, somebody. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. Thank you so much, Sister Hansen, for blessing us on this Sabbath afternoon. Thank you so much for your ministry. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to keep you in Jesus' name. I just want to thank New Devotion. Give it up for New Devotion. Amen. Thank you. All is good to see our young people worshiping the Lord in the house of God. Amen. 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 I just want to thank you to say thank you to all our platform participants for enriching our worship experience on this day and a special thanks to the young and mighty Nathan for reading the scripture reading amen amen I love to see young people participate in the worship experience we have on here every Sabbath day just want to say to my good friend Elder Hall we are praying for you and we are here for you. We're going to hold your hands. We're going to walk with you through this time as you mourn the passing of your brother. We at the Beacon Light Tabernacle Church family just want to express our condolences to the entire Hall family at this time. You are in our prayers. Whatever we can do, please let us know. But we'll continue to check up on you. We'll continue to pray for you. Your family is our family. Amen. Amen. Let us keep on lifting up the Hall family in our prayers. At this time, let us please stand as it is my custom. I will read the scripture one more time in your hearing before I delve into the word that God has laid on my heart for this afternoon. Our scripture consideration is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 35, verses 16 through 18, and it reads, Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel was in childbirth, and she had hard labor. When she was in her hard labor, the midwife said to her, Do not be afraid, for now you will have another son. As her soul was departing, for she died. She named him Ben-Oni, but his father called him Ben-Jamin. If you give me your undivided attention, I'll bring to you this afternoon a message I've titled, Name Change. Name Change. God speak. For your people are here on today. Speak with simplicity. Speak with clarity. And may your name and your name alone be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in the house, in the house of the Lord. Thirteen years 
after the birth of his first son, Ishmael, the Lord appears to a man by the name of Abram. Yahweh declares, I am God Almighty, which is the name translated El Shaddai. It is pertinent to no church that this is the first time the name El Shaddai is used in the Bible. At this juncture in history, God changes his name from Abram, which means exalted father, and God gives him a new name, Abraham. The reason for this name change, God tells him, is for I have made you a father of many nations. This sounds illogical to the ordinary mind because the father of many nations is 99 years old. So while Abraham is 99, with just one child, he receives a name change. You see, receiving a name change at 99 might not have been an easy thing for Abraham. Just imagine having a name for 99 years, and now you have to tell your friends, your family, and your neighbors, please don't call me Abram no more. My new name is Abraham. But you see, this name change is important because it establishes a new identity, a new purpose, and a new chapter, not just for Abraham's life, but for the lives of all those that shall come after him. Are you still with me, somebody? Many years later, Abraham's grandson, Jacob, has a unique encounter. The text says, in darkness, he wrestles with a divine messenger and refuses to let go, demanding to be blessed before he lets go of this divine messenger. You see, church, after this wrestling encounter, Jacob receives a name change. God gives him the name Israel. But it appears when looking through the Bible that Jacob is still not walking in the reality of this new name or it has not yet hit him that God has changed his name. So we see at a later point in history, God appears to Jacob again, blesses him, and says to him for the second time, your name is Jacob. No longer shall you be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. God reconfirms his name change from Jacob to Israel. It is interesting, church, that how God just like Jacob, can give us a new name which represents a new identity, but we still walk with our former name and former identity. Are you still with me, somebody? So that God has to keep on reminding us that we have a new name, a new identity, and a new purpose. The Bible says if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become a new creature. So Jacob receives a name change. So Jacob receives and this name change is important because like his grandfather, 
I'm not sure what's going on with that background. So Jacob receives a name change, and this name change is important because like his grandfather Abraham, it establishes a new identity, a new purpose, and a new chapter, not just for Jacob's lives, but for the lives of all those that shall come after him. For if we know what the Bible says and the history of Israel, we will see that through Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel emanate. They are named after his 12 sons, Reuben, Simeon, Le Levi, Judah, Dan, Nephtali, God, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and his last son, Benjamin. So if, church, there is anyone who knows the power of a name change, it is definitely Jacob. His grandfather, Abraham, was a recipient of a name change. And Jacob is also the recipient of a name change, establishing a new chapter in his life. You see, when we delve into the texts that we just read this afternoon, we see that something remarkable happens as Jacob now known as Israel, is journeying from Bethel to Ephrath. And by the way, Ephrath is the old name for Bethlehem. So Jacob is journeying from Bethel to Bethlehem with his family. Rachel, his wife, is pregnant, and she's at the point of childbirth. You see, to provide some historical context, you see, Rachel was barren for years. And she always longed to have her own children. Not having a child disturbs her so deeply that on one occasion, she tells her husband Jacob, give me children or I shall die. She even goes to the extent of offering her maid, Bilhah, to Jacob so that she can have children by extension through her maid. And when I first read this story, I was rooting for Jacob. I was saying, Jacob, don't take the maid. Don't take the maid. But the Bible says Jacob took the maid. But you see, God sees Rachel's distress and later blesses Rachel with a son. We serve a merciful God that it doesn't matter what we go through, he still hears when we cry. The Bible says that God sees Rachel's distress and blesses her with a son. And she names him Joseph, which means God shall add. Talk to me, somebody. She names him Joseph, which means God shall add. But understand this. She names him Joseph, not for him, but for that which she desires to come after him. The text says, when she names him Joseph, which means God shall add, she says, may the Lord add to me another son. So Joseph's name is not for Joseph. Joseph's name is for that which shall come after Joseph. Understand this? Her first son's name is actually her prayer to God. Joseph is a prayer, a petition she's making to God. A prayer that God 
will add to her another son. So Rachel is pregnant and journeying with her family to Bethlehem. In Rachel's womb church is the answer to her prayer. The very thing she petitions God for is about to come to fruition. You see, church, having witnessed my wife give birth to four children, I know that one of the greatest joys for any mother is to see the face of the one she's carried for nine months. Can I get a witness, mothers? But for Rachel, there is a turn in her story. She experiences an extremely difficult labor. The text says, when she was in hard labor, uh, the midwife says to her, uh, Rachel, do not be afraid, for now you will have another son. In other words, that which you prayed for is about to come to fruition. That which you petitioned God for is about to be manifest. And if the midwife was able to identify the gender of her son, it suggests to me that her baby was either fully out or partially out. Because she says, you're about to have a son as, as Rachel was pushing. But you see, church, understand this. The sad thing is that Rachel does not enjoy the answer to her prayer because she dies in the process of childbirth. The very petition, the very thing that she desired with all her heart, that she named her first son Joseph, not because of him, but because of that which was to come after him. She carries a baby for nine months, feels the pain, goes through all the trimesters, and at the end of the day, before she sees the fulfillment of her desire, she dies while the baby lives. The text says, and as she's dying, she names him Benoni, which means son of my sorrow. Benoni, son of my sorrow. But his father supersedes the name, overrides the name, and calls him Benjamin, the son of my right hand. I'm talking about name change. The baby's father understands the power in a name change. Name change is a part of his family's history. God changed his grandfather's name at the age of 99 from Abram to Abraham which means Abram exalted father to Abraham father of many nations. Additionally, Jacob is also a recipient of a name change. God changed his name from Jacob, which means a supplanter, a one who circumvents to Israel, which means God perseveres. Because through him, God will persevere with his people Israel. So in sorrow, Rachel names her son based on her current predicament. But Jacob overrides it and names him based on his future destiny. 
Yes, it was tragic what happened to Rachel. Yes, she would never get to enjoy the fruit of her womb. Yes, it was not what she envisioned, but Jacob understands there is something about a name. Are you still with me, somebody? Jacob refuses to allow his son's life to be defined by a sad event. This is why you should never allow a temporary situation to become your permanent focus. Don't be defined by your sorrow. Rather be defined by your tomorrow. I wish I had a church in here today. The name Benoni speaks about a sad past. However, the name of Benjamin speaks about a bright future. So instead of accepting the name Benoni, Jacob calls him Benjamin, establishing a new identity, establishing a new purpose, establishing a new chapter. For in this child, Jacob sees him as a progenitor of greatness. He knows that through Benjamin, many will be blessed. And as God will have it, church, many, many, many decades later, one of the greatest, I said greatest Christian converts, this world has ever seen rights in confident assertion. He proclaims boldly, I am of the stock of Israel, a Hebrew of Hebrews, and I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Stay with me, somebody. This man is also the recipient of a name change himself. Uh, he encounters God on the road to Damascus. So Saul of Tarsus becomes Paul the Apostles. This great man, a descendant of Benjamin, authors about half of the entire New Testament. His name change provides him also a new identity, a new a purpose, a new chapter in his life. He's a bold defender of the faith. He's on a mission to reach humanity, and he's not ashamed of his new identity. Hence, the Bible says that this man declares, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation for all those who believe, first the Jew and also the Gentile. He's a descendant of Benjamin. Staying with me, somebody. So I just want to thank God for the name change. For if Jacob settled with Benoni, there is no Benjamin. And if there is no Benjamin, there is no Paul. And if there is no Paul, there is no letter to the Romans. There is no letter to the Corinthians. There is no letter to the Galatians. There is no letter to the Colossians. There is no letter to the Thessalonians. There is no letter to the Philippians. There is no letter to the Ephesians. There is no letter to Timothy. There is no letter to Tidal. There is no scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If there is no Paul, there is no scripture that says, huh, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. If there is no Paul, there is no scripture that says, huh, if God is for us, who can be against us? If there is no Paul, there is no scripture that says, God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask and all we desire. If there is no Paul, there is no scripture that says, and we know, and you know, that all things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. If there is no Paul, there is no scripture that says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. They shall rise incorruptible. I said, if there's no Paul, there is no, there's no Corinthians, there is no Ephesians, there is no Galatians, there is no scriptures that encourage us. And if you are amazed on this afternoon by Abraham's name change, if you are amazed on this afternoon by Jacob's name change, if you are amazed on this afternoon 
by Benjamin's name change. And if you are amazed this afternoon by Paul's name change, I got news for you. The greatest name change celebration is yet to happen. And you and I are invited to be part of it. What are you talking about, pastors? Come with me to Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. The Bible says, let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give a white stone. And on that white stone is written a new name. A new name. The greatest name change is about to happen. It's going to happen in heaven. There will be great rejoicing. There will be celebration. You will have a new name. I will have a new name. We will have a new name. And God will receive the glory. We will praise him forever. Thank God for my new name. Thank God for your new name. For the greatest name change. Celebration is coming. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. We ain't seen nothing yet. Name change is coming. The scripture says, God will give us a white stone. And on that white stone is written a new name that no one except you shall know what that name is. So you're not going to know what my new name is. It's between me and God. And I'm not going to know what your new name is. It's between you and God. But I thank God for Abraham's name change. I thank God for Israel's name change. I thank God for Paul's name change. But I thank him even the more for my name change. Because my name change is personal to me. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. I can't wait for that celebration. What a grand celebration when I shall take my white stone and flip it and see my new name. Glory be to God in the highest. Glory be to God. Say amen, somebody. Say hallelujah, somebody. Say hallelujah. And if you want to see your new name on that precious white stone, stand with me at this time. Stand with me at this time. Hallelujah. Praises be to the name of God. Glory, hallelujah. King above all kings, we worship you. We adore you for that great celebration that's about to erupt. For that great celebration that shall shake this earth. Shake it more than an earthquake. Shake it because something is about to erupt. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God that we serve. The Bible says all the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are yea and they are amen. If he says it, he'll do it. If he's spoken a word, God will bring it uh, to pass. If God says something, you can take it to the bank and expect interest on it because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Father, I just thank you today. I'm going to give anyone here an opportunity who has not made it right with Jesus. You've not surrendered your life with Jesus. The promise in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17 about the new name applies to all those who overcome with him. The blood of Jesus has been freely given to each and every one of us. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him 
shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus is calling somebody today. For it is God's intent that we all dwell with him forever. That God establishes for each and every one of us a new name, a new identity, and a new purpose. Are you in here today and you want to say, Pastor, I just want to surrender my life to God through baptism. Raise your hand at this time. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Through baptism, you've not been baptized before. And you want to make a decision to say, hey, I want to be baptized. Amen. I see a hand right there. Amen. Amen. I see Abram right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? There's a hand up for baptism. Anybody else that is saying today? I see a hand right there, Sophia. Amen. Hands for baptism. Anybody else here that wants to say yes to Jesus at this time? Just raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Let's sing on to the Lord. Sing on to God, sing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Lord, we just come to you even on today. What a mighty, awesome God that you are. You make a difference in our lives consistently. We just want to worship you and magnify you on today. Thank you, oh God, for making provision for your people. We rejoice, oh God, in that great awesome name change celebration that is about to happen I want to be there we want to be there I don't want to miss out from such a great celebration after you paid for my ticket to go in by the blood of Jesus father there's no entrance fee it's been paid why would I be so foolish to reject this great and awesome celebration? I just thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us clean, that purges us, purges us from all iniquity. Father, at this time, I just want to pray for my Beacon Light Tabernacle Church family. And for all those who are represented here today and also virtually, that you will continue to strengthen us. You will continue to be with us. You will continue to bless us and bless our families. That when Jesus comes in the cloud of glory, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, may we all who are alive and remain be caught up in the air to be with you forever. 
This is my cry. This is my desire. And this is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please be seated. Be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God glory for what he did today through Pastor Umba. A powerful word reminding us that he has more planned for us in our lives. A name change. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 21, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Please stand with me. share the benediction. I have a couple of announcements. As was announced earlier today, after lunch, we have our, our personal ministries council meeting. Um, so just please meet us right there at the fellowship hall right after lunch. And this council meeting is for all the personal ministries committee, every elder, and all the departmental leaders. If you're head of any department, you're part of the personal ministries council. So please meet us right after lunch. Also remember at five o'clock sharp, uh, the education department is having a career uh, program in the fellowship hall. So please join us. It's gonna be very, 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 very informational. You get to learn about different people and different career options. So please, please join us at five o'clock. You do not want to miss it. Let us bow our heads at this time for a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for blessing us on one more Sabbath. Even as we look forward to the coming of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you will help us to focus on that which matters, that which pertains to your kingdom. Continue to be with us and continue to bless us. Bless the food that we're about to partake in. We commit, oh God, the programs we have lined up for this afternoon. 
Bless them also, and let us continue to have a wonderful time, even as we worship in your presence on this day. In Jesus' name, amen.